if, if he's kept that belt, that's worth a bit, I tell you. <laughs> there we go. But that was that was a good match. I enjoyed that match. Yeah. It went what just over ten minutes, maybe twelve minutes maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not, but the not fans loved crazy it. Crazy long, but enough, I would say, uh, in that one um, for sure. Like not not a whole lot. Now, um, obviously, we're at the back end of '91. I would imagine at this point things are being penciled in. Hogan Flair. Um, now, obviously, this is one of the most sort of talked about things. There has been a lot of articles, columns speaking about this. So I don't want to harp on too much about WrestleMania 8. But um, it's worth pointing out, Ric Flair, of course, he would go on and, you know, he'd, be, he'd, he'd win the Royal Rumble. And, of course, this was one where you win the title at the end of it. Um, and he'd get that honour and prestige. And, you know, again, WWE at that time, they must have had some huge faith in the guy. To, to have had that happen. Um, there was some shenanigans going on at the end. But um, for a long while, John, they, they even played promos of this stuff. They, they'd made interviews. You can pull them out of YouTube clips and stuff like that that were done, um, that this was going to happen. I think they even had, uh, what was his name? Jack Tunney, the, mm. uh, the then WWF president, of course, yeah. that um, <laughs> we all remember. <laughs> um, he, he, was, he was part of the storyline. He'd even announced it. Um, at that point and then somewhere something happened where obviously you, you hinted to it earlier that Hogan I think we have to point out he was very much looking to go his own way now whether that's into films movies he was certainly sniffing around that a lot more at this time um, and I think that I don't know if there was just this huge debate on does Hogan want to lose to Flair at Wrestlemania we can't have you know, Flair being beaten if Hogan's going to go off and sail into the yeah. sunset because then we've got nothing either. Um, then you've got the whole ending with the baby face scenario as well. That that creates a bit of dilemma. Um, in your point of view, from everything we've heard about, why on earth? <laughs> because we know there's money in this. And, and also, I should lay the groundwork here before you answer this, that just for all our uh, more sort of listeners that have maybe come on to WWE in the last 10, 15 years, that WrestleMania at this point was still very much, it was still sold on the main event. Uh, and that, you really have to point that out because, yes, WrestleMania, I'd say between one to three, by three, it really established itself as the granddaddy of them all, as they say. And after that, you would, I mean, I remember the stories about WrestleMania 3, John, that they, they got the Sky Dome literally in January and then they had to sell the tickets after that. So they sold that in, what, two months? Yeah. Um, whereas now, culturally, we know we buy a year almost in advance. You know, you make these plans to go there. But yeah. you go there for WrestleMania. You don't go there so much for the main event anymore. But back here, we are at a time where it's almost like you've got to have the drawing power. Now, we know Hogan had it. And now you've almost got someone who is from another company, but is, is almost the greatest heel. He, he's coming in. He's got loads of heat. He's won the Rumble. And and obviously, you've got two massive names, like Warrior and Hogan, very much sold itself. Um, why on earth didn't this happen in your eyes, John? Was it, what, what, what's your take on the whole well, thing? It's always been one of them, one of the biggest head scratches in you know uh, unanswered questions in the history of pro wrestling certainly the history of wwf i mean you know it's always been on your mind it's always been on my mind as a fan yeah. why didn't it happen and you know there's so many kind of urban legends and myths as to why it didn't happen but i mean there's some stories that vince mcmahon felt that their that their house show run between flair and hogan didn't work or mm -hmm. didn't captivate the audience or didn't sell the tickets and there's a lot of rumors that house show business not including msg of course that the house show business was was dropping and that uh, when they were performing doing the loop say to so to speak you know mm -hmm. that it just wasn't attracting the kind of audiences that they were expecting for a match of that sort of magnitude so there's there's that aspect to it um you know you've also got to think about who Hogan did go up against at WrestleMania 8, and that was Sid. Now, Sid was, the, you know, another big guy, taller mm -hmm. than Hogan, bigger than Hogan, younger, younger yeah. than Hogan. Vince McMahon brought him in, another uh, WCW uh, wrestler, of course, um, formerly, you know, Vid Sid Vicious coming in as Sid Justice. Yeah. And I, I felt that Vince McMahon saw a, a bigger 
main event in Sid versus Hogan, but then also saw an opportunity to have another main event. You know, you obviously Mm. had a double main event, the world title being defended by Flair against Savage. That was halfway in the card and then uh, being uh, headlined by Justice and Hogan, of course. So he saw an opportunity not to have one big main event with Hogan Flair, but to potentially have two big main events and to capitalise that way. So it could be a mixture of many, many things. But, you know, with Flair and Hogan having faced each other quite a few times on the house show circuit, maybe Vince McMahon was a bit bored with it, to be honest with you. Maybe, you know, it's his own little toy, his own little entity, his own little kind of paradise island that he likes to play with. And maybe he was a bit bored with it and saw an opportunity to freshen it up and give us something that we haven't had before. And of course, we know that Flair and Savage was a a, a killer of a match. It was a fantastic Mm -hmm. match. One of my favourite matches to this day. And, you know, that Hogan like The Undertaker, always had these big WrestleMania matches against the big monster, against the big heel. And, you know, there was nobody badder and bigger than Sid Justice. He came in as a baby face. He turned on Hogan, you know, and created this rivalry. Because like you say, they were promoting Flair versus Hogan as the main event for the title for WrestleMania 8. They were promoting it. There were there were uh, graphics. There were promos and various yeah. uh, vignettes. And then that all got scrapped. I think there was a, a, a mock-up press conference where it all kind mm-hmm. of turned on its head. And they, uh, you know, the following week announced a, a double main event. But it could be a mixture of all of that. But I think that Vince McMahon fell in love with Sid Justice. Um, he came in around the same time as Flair, I think around about SummerSlam 91, because yeah, he was yeah. the referee, wasn't he, in the main event, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when, when Sid Justice kind of first came onto the WWF scene. Uh, so I think he fell in love with him, turned him heel, saw this kind of dollar signs in his eyes with Hogan versus Justice, uh, Sid uh, in the main event. Obviously still had... Ric Flair in his back pocket um, and obviously the, the feud that they kind of created between him and Savage which was uh, let's be honest uh, pretty awesome and the match mm-hmm. they gave us uh, you know from the Who's Your Dome WrestleMania rate was was spectacular so I just feel that you know as a businessman he saw an opportunity to capitalize on these big stars and maybe put Hogan with the biggest ba- biggest heel and um, have Flair go up against Savage no you know people have flipped it and said well Maybe McMahon wasn't a fan of Flair. Uh, maybe he didn't think that he was, uh, you know, a big enough name or a big enough personality to go up against Hogan. You know, he's from the South. He's from the WCW and, you know, just wasn't kind of up to up to par. But as we just saw in that Madison Square Garden match, the chemistry between those two was was really, really good. I felt they played off of one another fantastically. They both sold for one another. The drama mm-hmm. was there. You know, the selling was there. The action was there. And it was, it was full pelt as well. It was, you know, pretty full on from as soon as the bell went and the fans absolutely loved it but maybe Vince McMahon just saw dollar signs in a slightly different direction yeah no uh, I, I think everything you say is is very much I think a lot of different outcomes and certainly a lot of that would make sense um, and yeah we know Vince I mean just to talk about Sid you know people forget Sid closed two Wrestlemanias mm. <laughs> you know, which is no small feat nope. um, and completely different times and he was somebody as well like I always put Sid as the sort of he was the sort of uh, 90s Brock Lesnar a lot of the time yeah. of Vince Vince loved Sid guy. he absolutely yeah. loved Sid to yeah. and, and there was something like I know Sid gets a bad rap um, sometimes but I actually found Sid's presence to be very intense uh, mm-hmm. before Goldberg came along on the scene, yeah. for instance. I felt like he, he played that very, very well. Um, and I, I liked to, I actually enjoyed both these runs in WWF, to be honest with you, in Same. different ways. Yeah. Um, I, I felt he was very believable um, a lot of the time, especially in ring. And he was very grey area. He, he didn't often go out of his way to slag fans off. He just <laughs> He was just that guy that you, you you definitely didn't want to like that was about it but then sometimes he did have his own fans which i always thought was was interesting but um i mean there's the other kind of story that of course we know that uh, hogan was on his way out of the company for a period of yeah. time to film mr yeah. nanny and they obviously like to close the show with the big uh, big baby face ending and of course they got that wrestlemania rate with hogan and, and warrior of course um but um, they obviously wanted that big baby face ending, but of course they couldn't have it with Hogan taking the belt off of Flair because, yeah. of course, if he's going to be out of the the picture for 
you know, however many months it's going to take him to fill Mr. Nanny, then, you know, and of course they had a, a strict draw back then. Jack Tunney was always on our screens and saying, you've got to defend the sure. championship every, yeah. <laughs> inside every 30 days. So maybe that could have played a part in it as well. And, and that, that maybe that's kind of the initial uh, seed that kind of planted the thought, well, we need to kind of switch things up a little bit because Hogan won't be here after April mm-hmm. and we can't put the belt on him. But I still want that big baby face ending. I can't remember. Did you did you uh, do did you do a, a, a WrestleMania eight um, thing for your podcast? Or I, I did. So uh, yeah. a week or so before Mania, yeah, we had the right, guys from Broken but Glorious. But but yeah, we, we we covered a lot of this kind of and on that podcast. It's, a good, and, yeah. it's a good show. I mean, it is a good show. I, I I think it's I recommend it to a lot of people. There's a lot of good matches on it. Um, Agreed. Yeah, um, really Manico. good. I mean, matches people forget. You know, you had. A very young Shawn Michaels about yeah. to sort of going to his singles um, with Tito Santana. You got the Undertaker up against Jake Roberts, which yeah. was very early Another days. Another good match. A great match with Brett and Roddy. Um, that one oh. sort of comes out as you know the the hidden gem, a yeah. bit like Steamboat and uh, and Savage from Free. Um, and then you got the, the the tag team stuff going on. It's like an eight man massive tag teams. I mean, when tag teams, this is the golden age for tag teams because like it was so much competition back then. Um, I mean, we're probably just coming towards the the, the sort of end of that peak, but I mean, it's very much there. Um, and of course, like you, you know, we've got these two big main events, but in between that, we've got we've got Tatanka and Rick Martel, who I liked Rick Martel quite a bit mm-hmm. as well. I yeah. think he's. You had the, the, another tag match, which is, you know, the tag team championships themselves, Ted DiBiase, uh, the whole Money Inc. combination there, uh, which was which was excellent. Which IRS, what a, what a great combination <laughs> to have um, IRS and, and Ted DiBiase um, up against the, the natural disasters, uh, which was a great match. And also uh, a match in there that people will probably forget, Owen Hart and Skinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it only went yeah, to about three or four minutes. Was. Yeah, and yeah, Owen, Owen right. Hart picked up the win there. And when I was watching it back for the podcast a few weeks ago uh, on on Wrestling with Jonas, I actually forgot that Owen Hart won that match. And although I've seen WrestleMania eight back twenty or thirty times uh, since uh, you know it first aired twenty eight years ago, I actually forgot that he won that match. And when I watched it back, I, I, I thought, well, fantastic, Owen Hart gets a WrestleMania win. So uh, over sure. a fairly new Skinner, who was a fairly new character, so usually they put the new characters over. But um, yeah, one of my favourite WrestleMania. Now, there could be an argument made here that if, for instance, they, they want that baby face ending, why do you think they didn't have Randy Savage close the show um, in, in, you know, him beating Flair for the title? That predominantly, we always have the title match at the end. Do you think that was purely down to Hogan maybe wanting that main event over everything and, and there was p- politics being played? Or do you think that in Vince's eyes, he still felt like the biggest closing of the show has to be Hulk Hogan. Yeah. We've got to have the poses at the end. Obviously, the finish to that match, it sort of suits everybody because it you know, ends in a big schmars. We've got you know, Papa Shango running down and then we've got this amazing return of Ultimate Warrior that you know, definitely got everybody off their seat. But you know, it certainly was a, a, a big conclusion sort of ending to it, I suppose. But um, why do you do? You, why do you think that they didn't have the WWF title match again? Is this a thing about? I know we harp on about this, but is this a lack of faith, even with Randy Savage involved? Potentially, yeah, potentially, and and I think that Vince McMahon always saw Hogan as the biggest star over Randy Savage. You know, right. when, when you when you look back at their their partnership as the Mega Powers, sure. and then their feud over WrestleMania Five, um, he always saw Hulk Hogan as, as the big draw, the big money man, and the, the the bigger superstar over Randy Savage. So Savage would always come second in the pecking order when it came between those two, and maybe mm-hmm. that had a, a part to play in it. Um, potentially, you know, if I was playing devil's advocate trying trying to look at it through Vince McMahon's eyes maybe he's thinking well you know the, the, the biggest pop is going to be the return of the ultimate warrior getting him back mm-hmm. after not seeing him on our screens for a year since uh it was possible was it uh, WrestleMania 7 when we last saw him um, yeah. he'd, he'd been out yeah. for quite a while anyway possibly yeah. 
uh, a full year. It was year. after SummerSlam the year before because of yeah. the, 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 he, he, he held him up for some money. Correct, correct. So <laughs> it was it was nearly a year, so a good eight or nine yeah. months since we last saw him. Um, and uh, yeah, so maybe Vince McMahon thought well, that's going to be kind of the, the big pop. You know, if we had the Ultimate Warrior making his return halfway through the card, maybe it just wouldn't have the same uh, effect or the same impact that we're after. So um, maybe that had, uh, I mean, Personally, um, I would have put Matching Man versus Ric Flair on last, most definitely. Yeah. Um, personally, I wouldn't have had the, the Ultimate Warrior come back. 